Can you tell someone's personality from their handwriting? Fan favorite question. In this video, I'll answer it, sharing insights from a meta-analysis of existing research using different personality assessments, including the MBTI and the Enneagram. And I'll add some examples from a book about forensic analysis as a bonus. First of all, isn't it a bit far-fetched to think that our handwriting and our personalities are linked? As it turns out, handwriting is actually brain writing because the instructions to create the scribbles and glyphs are sent to whatever body part is holding the pen. We know this because research into the neuroscience of handwriting has tested the effects of injury and drugs on the writing result. And not everyone writes with their hands anyway. Many people also write with their feet and their mouths. I should say this paper treated all personality characteristics as traits. You and I know that uh, traits and types are not the same things, but we can assume that a neurological brain pattern can be used to represent a personality characteristic, and as such, patterns may build neuromuscular movements. The assumption is that these movements occur unconsciously while we're writing and may be the same or similar enough for every individual who has that personality trait. So various researchers have mapped these writing movements or strokes with an individual's personality trait. The study of handwriting is called graphology and graphologists generally analyze an individual's handwriting and or signature well, by hand. They analyze large numbers of handwriting samples of individuals who have specific characteristics and look for characteristics that show up more frequently in this particular population than in the general population. Of course, this method is slow and also prone to errors. So researchers have worked on computational graphology or computer-aided graphology, also known as CAG, which can automatically predict an individual's personality based on a writing sample. Some characteristics are more stable and predictive than others, and of course it also matters who the participants are. To prepare for CAG, the sample has to be scanned and pre-processed, undergoing feature extraction and feature analysis steps. For example, Sheikh Oleslami et al. removed digitization artifacts, applied thresholding, and removed guidelines in this pre-processing step. They extracted features such as the left, right, and bottom page margins, line spacing, line direction, slant, and ratios of upper, middle, and lower zones, so the sizes of the letters. They implemented context-free grammar with 50 rules for analyzing these features and mapped them with interpretations using syntactic pattern recognition. Their CAG system was tested on 25 handwritten samples and personality descriptions that were given as the output were actually consistent with graphologists' interpretations as well. Here is an overview of a CAG prediction process. Starts on the top left, the sample is processed compared to an existing data set, and then different CAG methods are used, different prediction models, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner. So the outcome is a prediction of the personality trait, which is assessed for its accuracy and then applied to various possible scenarios. And some examples of research are that uh, early trait analyses looked at individual characteristics. For example, Mutale Patal uh, considered three types of T-bars, upturned, straight, and downturned, and they defined them as ambitions to be optimistic, controlled or balanced, or pessimistic, respectively. They had 50 participants and used an artificial neural network computation, so ANN. Rich accuracies for recognizing the letter T and ambition were actually 90.27% and 60%, respectively. The other example I wanted to show you was using the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, or MMPI, test to provide the personality information. 
Authors Fala and Kutanlu used GDA, or Generalized Discriminate Analysis, to review 70 individuals' writing for margin value, word expansion, character size, line space, word space, word tilt, line tilt, and horizontal and vertical ratio of characters. Participants belong to different education systems, ages and genders, and the authors found an efficiency of 76%. Another researcher used MBTI as a personality measure and analyzed features such as baseline, writing pressure, word slant, connecting strokes, the lower letter T, the lower letter F, uh, over and across three levels, including neural networks. 64 participants were asked to provide handwriting reference samples and take the MBTI questionnaire repeatedly every two weeks for a period of two months. Analyzing the predefined handwritten sample text showed an accuracy of 86.7%, and testing random handwritten text from the sample participants provided an accuracy of 78.8%. And now the Enneagram is another approach to personality entirely. According to the Enneagram Institute, it is based in symbolism and describes the separation of the ego individuality from the soul unity. Prativi et al. analyzed 49 handwriting samples using fuzzy C means and an interpretation by an Enneagram practitioner and they found a match rate of 81.6 percent. So we can't really compare these studies to one another because they're using different people, different personality constructs and different methods of analysis. So we can't say that one personality construct or one CAG is more effective than the other. Also, all of these studies are working with quite small samples, which is probably because the majority of handwriting data sets are actually private. It's a lot of work to put together data sets of specific populations that include a good male-female ratio or age group or socioeconomic status or career, etc. There is one public database for English called IAM, Handwriting Database, and I'm going to link that below. The paper mentioned a couple of interesting applications for graphology, for example, health conditions like heart disease and Parkinson's. So for heart disease, apparently, certain warnings can be obtained from one's handwriting during the pre-illness phase, i.e. before the detection of actual symptoms can be found by any test. Kidar et al. extracted details on slants, total length of horizontal and vertical baselines, pen pressure and size, and uh, Gaurav and Ramesh saw an effect on blood pressure. So they experimented with 18 participants aged between 18 and 45 and concluded with 84% and 78% accuracies respectively. For Parkinson's, a frequent indicator is micrographia, which shows up in smaller letters size while writing, slowness of movement, hesitations, pauses, and delays. Drotar et al. built a predictive model using eight handwriting tasks, including spirals, repetitions of letters, words written in the native language of the participants, and also writing longer sentences. Samples were collected from 37 patients and 38 controls using digitizing tablets in the XY plane and in the pressure axis, and the accuracy achieved in classifying Parkinson disease patients using this kinematic handwriting uh, feature was actually 79.4%. So much for health applications, but there's also the whole area of deception and forgery, which brings us to the forensic angle. Here are the major principles of handwriting as defined by forensic document examiners or FDEs. No two people write exactly alike. No one person writes exactly the same way twice. The significance of any feature as evidence for identity rests on its agreement with a reference sample. Imitating all features of someone else's handwriting at the same speed and skill level is not possible unless the writing has been traced. Then the author won't be able to be identified because since they are tracing, they're not leaving behind any of their own handwriting features. So just like our personalities, our writing ability is equally complex. Think about it. To write, you have to learn how to hold the pen, you have to be able to read, you have to have visual representations in your mind, to not just see the letters but understand what they mean. There's so much learning, so much cultural impact, 
And then there's at least a dozen factors that influence how you even form the letter. For example, the kind of pen or paper or writing surface you're using, your writing experience and skill level, which is also known as graphic maturity, your writing speed, does it flow naturally, are your thoughts ahead of what your hand can keep up with, which system have you learned, print or cursive, even your nationality, which alphabet do you write in, the Latin, Kanji or Cyrillic, right? And then also your physiological condition, your mood, are you tired, are you injured, are you excited? And yes, according to Sodek, uh, some of your character as well. And he mentioned vanity, affection or desire to imitate others. So even if a whole class of children learns from the same, you know, Western copy book, their handwritings don't look exactly alike. I've seen this as an adult teacher for calligraphy as well. Even though we're all using the same tools and following the same calligraphy rules, each style has differences in it. Still, FDEs or forensic document examiners are able to tell which system a certain writer has been using since there are subtle differences between even, for example, the Palmer and the Peterson method. Quick tangent, just to make sure we're on the same page. The difference between handwriting and calligraphy is that handwriting is your natural way of writing that we use for efficiency and speed. And calligraphy is a specific type of style that uses specific tools and you write according to specific rules. And then there's also lettering, which is drawing letters. So overall, an experienced writer will have a certain speed, slope, angle, size and pressure to their writing. It will show both recognizable characteristics from the system they have learned, as well as individual idiosyncrasies. If you want to get someone's sample reference or a specimen for comparison, you might ask them to write the London letter. But surely some things are obvious. For example, if you're left or right-handed, right? Well, apparently even an FDE may not always be able to tell the difference between a left or right-handed writer because although there are some unique high pressure upstrokes or wonky ovals that you get when you're hooking your arm over the page and writing in an inverted style, some right-handed people also do that. So forensic examination is both an art and a science in that it uses principles or methods and builds on systematic knowledge gained through observation and experimentation. As with other sciences, the examiner also has to be as objective as possible and keep their subjective element in check. The process goes through several phases, beginning with a check of pictorial similarity, i.e. do the two pieces of writing look the same. Then follows an in-depth examination, comparison and analysis of all the writing features and characteristics before determining whether the similarities or differences allow a definitive conclusion. If the conclusion is not definitive, then how qualified is it or to what degree of certainty can the authorship be established? Graphology has been applied not just to find forgeries. Some researchers have also tried to determine if a person's behavior towards violence could be predicted using a handwriting sample. They mentioned that certain characteristics could be inferred to find violent behavior. However, they could not reliably automate it. So in summary, and taking it back to the meta-analysis paper, sadly, there is no convincing scientific validation or evidence for mapping handwriting features to respective personality traits yet. Existing approaches need to be improved in terms of feature extraction and having a clear mapping with a personality characteristic so as to develop more useful systems. Also, specific applications can be targeted in medical and forensic fields and the accuracy of the automated personality trait identification would depend on many factors, including the assessment used, and this should all be developed in collaboration with experienced psychologists and graphologists to reduce error rates. Having said that, if you'd like to do a mini mapping of your handwriting to your personality yourself, here are the descriptions of how different personalities dot their I's and cross their T's. Let me know if you think these are true for you, and again, if you are one of the many people who have seen their handwriting deteriorate because we're all just typing nowadays, I have handwriting and calligraphy classes available on Skillshare and on Udemy, and you'll find the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.